Greetings everyone. If you have been following my channel for a while, then you might have noticed that I have never had a proper lab bench power supply. In the past, I've been using cheap DC to DC converters as power supply. This converter lacks any form of current regulation. As a result, when doing prototyping, if there's a fault within the circuit, connecting it to power will likely destroy it. I've been looking into buying a proper lab bench power supply, but they are usually expensive, very heavy, and lacks features such as setting power limits and saving settings. So in this video, I will show you how to make a mini lab bench power supply, which weighs just 650 grams, thus it is extremely easy to carry around. And unlike other power supplies, this power supply also features direct DC input, which allows you to connect it to any DC source that is less than 50 volts. This is great if you want to charge your phone or laptop in the field, or increase the maximum voltage and power of the power supply. So without further ado, let's get to the materials list. First of all, you'll need a case for your project. In my instance, a designer printed a custom case for all the components. But if you don't have a 3D printer, I also included a version which you can laser cut or hand cut out of 1 8 inch MDF or acrylic. If you wish to hand cut the case, an engineering drawing is also available. As for always, all the components, file links, and the script are in the description. The core component of this power supply is UC-Tronic's 50V 5A step-down converter, which can accurately regulate voltage, current, and power. And we are going to pair this step-down converter with a 110V AC to 36V 5A DC power supply. The cooling is done through this 12V 80 by 10 mm fan. To power the cooling fan, we are going to use this small DC to DC step-down converter. Another component you are going to need is a 3-pin AC power cord, so you can plug the power supply into the wall. And also two of these three position rocking switches. And now for the connectors for the input and output. The first connector you'll need is a female banana pulse connector. Not only can they fit banana plugs, but they can also act like screw terminals for easy connection of wires. The other connectors are two 5mm female DC jacks, a female USB connector, and two XT60 female connectors. You will also need wires that are at least 20 gauge thick. If you plan on using screw terminal for DC input, then you also need a 5 amp shocky diode, so you don't fry the power supply due to reverse polarity. Optionally, you can use two 3mm LEDs as indicators and four rubber feet stickers for stabilization. The 3D printed version uses M3 screws to secure everything together. And this is the overall electrical schematic. It is quite a simple schematic. Just make sure you don't mix up the input side from the output side. The first step is to prepare the AC cable. If you strip the end of it, there should be three wires. In the USA, the black wire is the live wire, and it's the one you shouldn't touch. The white one is neutral, and the green is ground. Please refer to your country's wire color codes, as connecting them wrongly can destroy the circuit and pose a risk of electrocution. Before soldering the wires permanently into the power supply, we need to first make sure that the circuit is working correctly. This is done by hooking up the live and neutral wire to the screw terminal. Polarity does not matter for now, and checking if there's voltage on the output. During this process, do not touch the circuit until the power is disconnected and the LED completely turns off. After testing the circuit, we can move on to preparing the case. First, get the two 90 degrees cable guard and press in a 8 by 3 mm magnet. The magnet is optional. Secure both cable guards onto the case by using M3 by 8 screws on both sides. If you put in the magnets, screw in a M3 by 3 screw onto each side of the case. This way the magnets can snap into place. 
Optionally, you can 3D print a mesh and glue it to the inner sides of the case for extra layer of safety. But in hindsight, this is really not needed. Next, push the rocker switch into the back of the case. I used a 2-pin switch as that is all that's needed. But you can also use a 3-pin rocking switch. Next, pushing the AC cord into the hole next to it and solder the live wire to the switch. To make the power indicator LED, desolder the LED on the 36 volt power supply and solder on a 3mm LED with wire extensions. Then, desolder the screw terminal on the AC side. Keep the connector as we need it later for DC input. Now get the 3D printed base and place the AC to DC converter in this orientation onto it and secure it in place with three screws. Do not put any screw on the hole marked with the ground symbol yet. Next, get the mini DC step down converter. This is what's going to be used to power the fan. The fan indicator LED is made by extending the onboard LED with wires. To set the proper voltage, connect it to a voltage source larger than 13 volts and turn the onboard potentiometer until the output voltage is at 12 volts. Then secure the step-down converter in place with two screws. The next step is to configure the DC input side. For my power supply, I use the screw terminal, XC60 connector, and DC jack to keep as many input options as possible. But you can choose to omit any of these connectors. In any case, Connect all of them in parallel, and do not forget to add a shocky dial facing into the positive input of the screw terminal, so you don't fry the power supply by reverse voltage. Next, join the ground wire from the DC input into the power supply and the DC-DC step-down converter. This way, the cooling fan will always be active no matter which power source the power supply is using off of. Now it's time to configure the output side of the power supply. Just add in all of the connectors you want and solder them all in parallel, then glue them in place. Before adding the lid, solder a switch to the output of the DC-DC power supply. This is done so that the fan can be turned off, but you can omit the switch if you want the fan to stay on all the time. Now get the lid and push in a 3-position rocking switch and solder the positive output from the DC side to the top terminal of the switch. Next, screw in a wire to the positive output of the AC to DC converter and solder the other side to the bottom terminal of the switch. For the middle terminal, join a wire with the input of the step-down converter and solder it to the switch. The next step is to screw in the banana terminals and mount the fan to the top of the lid then solder its wires to the output of the step-down converter. To configure the AC side, solder the live wire to the switch and solder the output of the switch to the board. Connect the neutral wire straight to the board. And finally, connect the ground wire to the screw hole that has the ground symbol next to it. And screw in the final screw to secure the board in place. Make sure that every connection is well heat shrinked or insulated. Before putting the lid on, glue in the DC jack and switch to their respective hole. And finally, take the pair of input and output wires and screw them into the step down converter. Before securing the case together, plug in the converter into the wall and test the power supply to make sure that everything is working correctly. And also don't forget to test the DC input side as well. It looks like everything is working correctly. So now we can secure in the case with 8 M3 screws and slide in the step down converter. For stability, you can take these rubber feet and stick them on to the four corners of the power supply. And optionally, glue on the 3D printed labels, cable stabilizer, and cable lock. Finally, I added rings and brackets for aesthetics. And with that, the power supply is finally complete. Just unwrap the cable and plug it into the wall. And through the menus, you can accurately set output voltage 
current, and power. This power supply can be used to prototype electronics, charge batteries on capacitors, and power various electronics. And this is the conclusion of this project. If you enjoyed this project, please give this video a like and consider subscribing to my channel for more DIY projects like this. If you would like to support the channel, you may leave a tip on my Thingiverse account. Thank you all for staying with me through the whole process. And thanks for watching.